um, it continues, but also because of what's happening in Minneapolis. And so I'm excited to be able to talk to Tracy Ellis Ross, not only about some of her incredible work, uh, she's got a movie coming out that uh, has partially been inspired by her mom, but also about the situation that's going on in Minneapolis and sadly going on in too many places all over this country. And uh, if you all have any questions for her uh, or comments you want to make, I thought we could have a hopefully fruitful conversation. I don't know. I'm at a loss myself in terms of why this keep, keeps happening and how we can address this systemic issue of of what's happening with uh, in police departments and what's happening with these incidents that don't seem to go away. So Tracy's going to join me. She's made a beautiful uh, Instagram post or she wrote a beautiful Instagram post earlier today. Um, and I thought until she joins us, well, I, here she is. I thought now that she's here, I was going to ask her to possibly read it. Andy, Tracy, hi. Hi, Katie. So happy to see you. How I'm are so you? So happy to see you. Let's see if I can get this so my head's not cut off. Yeah. Hello. You look great. And, you know, we were just talking and I was saying to people who were tuning in how excited I was to see you and to, to catch up with you, talk to you about this extraordinary new movie you're in that looks so good and you're singing, which is so exciting. But, you know, everything, I think uh, uh, Paul has been cast over everything with what's going on in Minneapolis uh, right now and and the murder of, of George Floyd. And you've posted some really moving things. A uh, 12 year old uh, African American boy singing that beautiful song and uh, you posted something right after this happened, but you did a, a, a quite a moving post this morning. And I don't know if you have, uh, have it handy. And if you don't, I'm happy to read it because I have it in front of me. But I, was I can read it. It also just, you know, um, I'll just explain actually for me where it came from. Yeah. Um, so great. I would love that. You know, um, this is a difficult time. Um, and it's not just what's happening in Minneapolis. It's a brutality that unfortunately is not new and is uh, the result of not only systemic, but um, a, a, a misunderstanding a, 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 of humanity. Um, that is happening on individuals in an individual way and also in a systemic way. Um, and it's not a misunderstanding, it's, it's racism. That's what that is. And um, so my heart is heavy today. I have um, images in my head that um, really hurt, you know, um, and people are hurting. And I woke up this morning and usually when I wake up, I say my prayers and then I meditate. And sometimes I can't still my mind. Sometimes it's really hard to do that. And um, this morning was one of those mornings and you know, I have my movie is coming out today and um, It's not just that it's a movie. It's the first time that I'm singing It is my first feature film where I am in the leading role and it's a, a big deal in my own personal life um, But I am holding very complex and conflicting feelings because my heart feels heavy um, And so I couldn't still my mind this morning and sometimes when that happens I ask myself the question what do I have need of? What would soothe me? What would um, settle me now? And that's where what I wrote, um, it came out of sort of a journal entry of what I was feeling this morning and what I had need of. And so basically, um, let's see if I can find it um, on my Instagram. Here we go, I'm on my iPad. Um, let's see, yeah. I mean, I could honestly just look at my phone, <laughs> but you're on the phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here it is. I've got it. So dear black people, I love us. I love you. I want to be with you today connected to us. I am reaching out through the air to hold your hands right now. I am imagining myself looking, looking into your eyes, into your brightness, your power, your hearts and your souls. Please seek comfort and support. Be gentle with yourself, even though the world isn't gentle with us. We have yet again witnessed disgusting, horrid, and violent brutality, a disregard for our humanity. This brutality is not new. I waver between brokenhearted and full of rage. I am looking for the light. 
I know I would see it in your eyes. So I am imagining our collective light. I am imagining your eyes. I love us, Tracy. That sort of when you, that first of all, that's beautiful. And mm -hmm. I read it earlier and, and I'm just wondering what your feeling was when you first heard about this story, when you first saw the video of George Floyd and the kind of feelings that that erupted in you? You know, I don't I don't know that I'm um, honestly, I don't know that I want to recall that right now. Um, I mean, uh, I stumbled upon it by accident, which is unfortunately so much of what happens now. You don't know what you're watching and then that's what you see. Mm -hmm. um, there was another story that was in the news and then um, sort of that led to um, me seeing that video. Um, and I don't know that recounting what, I, the truth is I'm still processing what I'm feeling. I don't totally have the language to express what I'm feeling. I don't think any of us could or would or do have that, um, including you, you know, uh, I, it's like there's a collective grief and, and I don't know, I don't know that I wanna be the subject of sort of um, the inquiry in this moment, honestly, about this, it, it feels, um, yeah, like I just don't have the language totally, you know? Do you, you know, it seems to me, I've been, you know, covering these stories for many, many years. Uh, I'm writing a book right now. So I was thinking back on Rodney King, which mm -hmm. I in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, was sort of in a, in a way the first recorded incident, which sparked outrage and, 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 uh, anger across the country and 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 yet i continue to cover these stories and of course this is so reminiscent of eric garner in 2014 who said many of the same things and i'm wondering uh how why we have not made more progress in this and i know tracy you're not an expert on policing and police forces but you know, it's it's so maddening and frustrating, I think, that this is still going on. It's disgusting. You know, and and I thought that there was a, a reckoning of sorts. Uh, there's a woman named Jennifer Eberholz I, at Stanford who talks about implicit bias. She's worked with a lot of police forces in Oakland, California, um, and it just doesn't seem to ever change. And I think so many people are at a loss, like how are we going to change this narrative and change these events from happening time and time again? And how can, is there a way that we can work together and make some progress in this area? Well, it, it's, it's not the work of the black people. Yeah. It's not. There's nothing that needs to change here. Um, our, our identity, my identity, my beingness, my humanity is what it is. It is the perception that is coming from somewhere else, from um, an, a, 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 an understanding of race in a way that is not true. And there are systems to support it um, and people that still adhere to that thinking, um, despite the fact that it just has no truth. Um, and so again, like I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's not, it's not mine to answer. It's mine to feel um, right now. Um, and so I, I, I understand the, um, the questions, um, but I also feel like it's a conversation that needs to not necessarily be happening uh, in, in, I don't know. I don't know, Katie. Um, I know that it can stop. Mm -hmm. People need to do better, be better, and um, do the work on themselves, um, and really look at what about what about that situation. Um, none of that had to happen. I think leadership is so important. Language and communicating to to people is so important really anytime, but particularly at a time like this. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know. It just feels like the whole country is so frayed right now in so many ways. And it's, it's really, I think, heartbreaking on many, many levels. And uh, I don't know what the solution is, but I wish that we had almost... Well, I think, I think um, some of it is that people need to be held accountable for their actions. Yeah. Um, that kind of behavior will continue if people think that it is something you can get away with. That's one part of it. People need to be held accountable for their actions. That is murder. We witnessed it. We saw it. And I know, I, and I know that I was just looking up to see if either of these, any of these men had been charged and I know they've been fired, but, and I know there's a department of justice investigation, but, uh, I think it, it, what we saw in, in, went in, in Alabama too. And, and we saw with Arbery uh, that the, that justice is not swift and that it's, it's not swift and it doesn't happen. And yeah. that's, there's, there's a problem there. There is a system in place that supports a, a racist thought that, um, allows that it, it's not it's not the work of people of color to fix this is this is not that's not what that is um elections matter who is in power matters um we see that in all aspects of our lives we see that in um all industries um it matters who is in power it matters who has a voice it matters um who is controlling um these systems and making them continue. Um, and I also, as I said, and I'll just say again, like, you know, in the place that I'm in, in my feeling, it's hard to articulate and nor do I really want to have to. Yeah. To and like, I don't know what the answers are because they're not my answers to give. Like, I can tell you what the answer is. Stop looking at black people like they're not humans. Stop treating black people like they are not human. It's really simple. Like, wake up. You know, that's not my work. That's not my work. Yeah. You know? um, and and it, so it, it's, and then there's so much more to it. You know, I mean, as we're in this pandemic and we see the inequities that exist systemically across this country have not, it, it just, it's, it doesn't work. It's not equal. It's not fair. It's, it is not, it is, you know, and, and there's all different spaces and places and there's experts in the world that can actually have real conversations about this. And I've been doing the work in um, social justice and um, in, uh, in the criminal justice system and in our government that actually can have very um, astute and clear conversations with you. And, the, and I'm not that person. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a, a human being who is very affected today, like so many others yeah. um, that, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know all the answers. I'm sure I could I, I would be happy to spend the time going, uh, hi, let's talk to me. This is the person. This is the person you talk to. You know what I mean? It's not me. This is the person you talk to that's going to help you untangle some of this. Um, but it's also, there's questions that a lot of people have to ask themselves. Um, I don't know what that woman's name was in Central Park, but, um, you know, there's yeah. something you have to ask yourself about that situation and what you're calling for and why you're calling for that. Um, and what are you afraid of? Because what she was calling for is what happened to <laughs> George. <laughs> that's, right. that's what happened. And that's what happens. That's what that, that's and the thread. I, I don't want to put you in a position to have to articulate the solutions either. I, so I appreciate you just giving me your pure human response to what's going on. And I know it's, it's, it must be a complicated day because you are, uh, you know, have something very exciting personally that's happened happening to you. And then obviously against this backdrop of so much uh, turmoil and tumult that's happening and that, is not just a one-time event. So I appreciate you just sharing with me, Tracy, yeah. uh, those feelings. I really do. And I, I, uh, I feel really appreciative that, that you were able to do that. But I want to talk to you a little bit about, about this film that you're doing because yeah. it's such an important role for you. And it's, it represents <laughs> such a big, big step for you. As you alluded earlier, it's the first time 
you've been that you're singing um, <laughs> role and you you've got this leading role you haven't done a film I don't think since 2009 no and I've never had a leading role in a film so, so it I'm, is congratulations it Thank looks you. it looks incredible and um tell us it's called high note and mm -hmm. uh tell us a little bit about the storyline because it does hit in some ways it hits close to home with your mom <laughs> little bit right in some ways but not really um it's very different it's a wonderful role and you know i'll just say this um it is a strange thing um this is life this is uh, and and unfortunately this is uh, a really tough time um it's and and the brutality that is happening that we are seeing is not new that needs to be made really clear the cameras yeah. are new this is not new information in this country this is not new um this film for me um, is a really special moment. I walked through some fear um, to sing for the first time. I tried something new at 47. Um, the message of the film is really special and really strong and really good, which is that no matter the age, no matter the phase, um, no matter the place you are in your life, it is never too late to change lanes, to follow your dreams, to, um, to go after that fire and that passion inside you. Um, it's a story about two women who are on parallel paths, two women leads that are not against each other, but on parallel paths of finding their voices. Um, it is, uh, I get to sing, which is fantastic. It is a, a feel good movie, a moment of joy, a moment, an hour and a half when people can escape and sort of feel good, get dressed up, pour a cocktail and watch something that might make your heart feel joy. And I do feel like in the midst of this, that joy is a revolutionary act. Um, you can um, have a broken heart and also um, experience joy that is in front of you. And so I feel very grateful that um, I had this opportunity to do this movie for so many different reasons and that it is coming out now. It's a strange day. Um, and I do want to share with people like a little bit of joy in the midst of this. And that is not at all to discount the reality of what we are feeling, the fear, the heartbreak, the rage, the upset, any of that. Um, so, yeah. Well, t were you nervous about singing? I mean, this is something yeah. that I mean, and, and how did you feel about getting that opportunity and listening to yourself? Were you, were you terribly self-critical about it? <laughs> I wasn't. Honestly, I wasn't self-critical. Um, I was terrified, but once I was in it and doing it, it felt really fine and good and comfortable. I felt more at home than I <laughs> would have expected. Um, but it was a childhood dream that at some point turned into a big fear. And you know, the longer you wait to do something, like the older you get, it's so funny. Um, the older you get, you know all of the risks. <laughs> like when yeah. you're young and you try something, but when you're, the older you get, you're like, I know it could go badly. Like, I know this could be bad. I know people could judge me and criticize me. I, all of those things. Um, but so um, <laughs> it, was, it was worthy of walking through. And you, you're, uh, Dakota Johnson is your, your co-star, I guess. And yeah. she's, she, as you said, it's so nice to see two women on parallel paths that they're Absolutely. not against each other. They're actually supporting each other. And, um, and I love the idea because, you know, I'm 63. I know you're 47, so you're a relative youngin. But I like the idea that, you know, that you're, you're in, in a role that, um, you're saying no. I I still I I still can grow. There's still things I want to do. There's still risks I want to take. They're trying to get you do to do a residency in Las Vegas, and you're like, screw that. I don't want to do that. I want to I want to make another record. Yeah. So, you know, I think ageism hasn't really been addressed at um, very much in our culture either. I mean, there are many isms, and they're all horrendous. But that's something that I think hasn't really been been, been tackled, and oftentimes there's uh, obviously overlap with a lot of these these attitudes. Absolutely, yeah. That make you feel that must have been really inspiring for you to say, "I'm gonna, I'm," but also risky too, right? Yeah, risky, but the right kind of risk. I like that expression, "healthy risky behavior." <laughs> I think that's how you grow. <laughs> that's how you stretch. Um, yeah, you know. 
it also it was really telling like it was it, it's a story about um a whole bunch of like that moment there's a moment in the movie it's in the trailer where grace davis is sitting there at the record label at this table with a whole bunch of men who were half her age who somehow feel entitled enough to just say what they think her life should be as if it is their choice as if um, they are the ones that hold the, the keys to the rest of her life. And we see that so much in all industries and all places. And I loved playing a character and telling the story of a woman who was in her full agency and being who she wants to be, not trying to be 20, not trying to be 30, but actually just owning where she's gotten to in her life and also sharing the humanity and the fear of that. Um, and the reality of what that looks like as a black woman in the world. Yeah, well, I'm excited for you. And what does your mom think? Of course, I had to ask you about, you she know. She hasn't seen it. We had, a, we, had a family, we had a family screening scheduled for two days after the lockdown here in LA, and so it didn't happen. And then we were all so busy, everybody trying to make sense of what was happening and be safe and figure out what we needed to do or not to do or whatever that was. And I forgot about it. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, my mom, like none of us, my siblings, no one has seen it. And so I asked my mom if she wanted an advanced link. And she was like, no, I'm actually gonna wait um, and see it when it everyone sees it. Cause maybe it won't, I'm not in a theater, but at least it'll have the energy in the air. Yeah. And where can people watch the film, Tracy? So on almost all streaming platforms. Yeah. Um, so DirecTV, Apple, Fandango, YouTube, um, Vudu. But if you are curious where you should go to find it, you can go to watchthehighnote.com and you can figure out um, exactly where is easiest for you. Also, the soundtrack, I have five songs, five songs, Kate. Wow. Five songs on the soundtrack, which also drops tonight. I love the way I'm saying that. My first single, um, Love Myself, which awesome. is such a great song. Um, that song is already on the charts, Katie. I'm on the charts. Tracy Ellis Ross is the singer is on the charts. Wow. Just saying. Um, so that is, <laughs> that's happening tonight as well. So tonight starting at midnight. So according to, not tonight, so it would be May um, 29th. Oh, so, okay. So not until midnight. That's exactly. Okay. You can watch it tomorrow if you need to go to bed. And was this going to be a, was this scheduled to be a theatrical release or was it always going to be a streaming movie? It was going to be a theatrical release. So this is a shift. Um, I was excited. How, 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 was that super disappointing or are you just, you know, I think now I, you probably get a lot more people watching it almost. I think, you know, first of all, yes, it was disappointing, but I feel very clear um, the disappointment is very different than sadness and pain. And there, that my discomfort is a privilege right now with what yeah. so many people are going through. Um, the unemployment um, that's happening in this country, most of those being black and brown women who are unemployed. Um, the fact that people are in um, lines to get food. Um, the fact that so many lives have been lost um, and that we are not able, people are not able to grieve with the ritual and the connection that we are used to. Um, the fact that my film, um, my first film is not on a big screen is really okay. People will get to see the film and it will bring the same joy um, in your home that it would have brought on a big screen. I wish we could see it collectively to we, with each other, but all it does is ask us tweet i'm we're having a live you know twitter party put on something special call your friends and tell them about it share your experience share what it brings up for you so it's an opportunity to connect in a different way we get to be flexible um with how we move in the world and we get to own more than one thing at once yeah well i'm super excited for you and i can't wait to see the film and the trailer is great you Thank said you. And the trailer. So I can only imagine that with all the songs, how you so you sing five songs in it? There are five songs on the soundtrack, Katie. Oh, on the soundtrack. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to see you. Thank you for uh, talking about so much with me. You know, um, I think a lot of people are still processing what's going on and there's feeling, I think a lot of people are feeling very overwhelmed by it. And, uh, 
I think we'll be processing it for a while. I think there's a lot to process. There's a lot of action to take and there's a lot of self, um, uh, people need to look at themselves and really ask themselves some difficult questions. Race and racism are very um, sticky conversations for people to have, but we must have them. Um, not just me and you, people need to have them in the privacies of their homes and even within themselves and ask themselves the, the hard questions and also do the hard work because the only way this is going to change is if a lot of people really take a look at their way of thinking and look at it differently and so that all of us can keep showing up for a different kind of world. We don't want to live in this anymore. There's some people that seem to think they still want to live in this. I don't. Yeah. I don't live in this anymore. And I think it, it, needs, it needs to be done. And that is not my work to do. Well, you're in extremely eloquent about the whole issue. And I think you're right. I hope that this will usher in not only self-examinations for people, but collective action and, and a commitment to make, make sure that things do change. Once all. Anyway, Agreed. you're so great. Love being with you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Katie. Um, Best of luck with the movie. Thank and you. Music and everything else. And um, I just love talking to you. It's such a treat. Yeah. You. You, bring, you bring, you make people smile and, and you make people think, which are two incredibly important qualities. So thank you. Thank you, Katie. Be well. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.